Hey, you drop that manor on the floor. Better get that manor up. We ain't got many of them. I ain't got no money to buy no more manners. Well, good morning, folks. It's Richard here once again. I'm on the Coosa River. Last night, as far as weather conditions, last night it rained and it rained and it rained and it rained and it rained, and it rained once again. I tell you what, the water is still high and muddy. I'm going to fish in a place where I fished a couple days ago because I found a little area, which is nothing but a drop. Fish are coming through a few and then nothing, and then a few fish is coming through and then nothing. It's probably uh, the most reliable area that I know right now. I know some down the river. But it's too far, I'd have to go back to the ramp, trailer over there to a different ramp, and fit. there's two areas over there that's similar to this one. But, uh, hey, let's just change your technique up a little bit in this area. This is a 1 24th of an ounce peel head jig. A lot of people call them aspirin heads. You know, they're the shape of an aspirin appeal. It's, uh, like I said, 1 24th of an ounce. Need your sharp truce, excuse me. Been catching a lot of fish on that color here lately, and I'm using a four pound test Mr. Crappie high vis line, and this jig is tied with a loop knot just about always, unless I'm uh, not vertical jig. And sometimes I'll use a loop knot when I'm casting, but this is six pound test braid. And I do not know the name of it because I loaded this reel up with it and threw the pack away. I'm sorry. Now, I've never used six pound test braid. My connection is a uni knot. And it's a, uh, as far as the reel goes, it's a cadence reel, real small one, CS10, the smallest one they make, and an eight foot jig pole made by All Star. Two-piece rod, um, moderate light. It's rated for four to 12 pound test line. Uh, and it's eight feet long, which I done said. What I'm gonna do today, because the water is so muddy, is I'm gonna incorporate a manner onto this 124th of an ounce pill head. And I'm gonna wait for these fish to come through. So I'm gonna pick one off every once in a while. It's gonna be slow fishing, but cross your fingers. Let's see if we can get it done. What kind of other day? For those of y'all who's just starting off crappie fishing, I would rather have a small minnow. Let me just go ahead and hook him up. I'm gonna go through the bottom of his jaw and come up through both lips, just like that. For those of y'all who's just starting off crappie fishing, this is a very, very effective way to catch the bigger fish. Oh my. Feels like a lot better fish right here. It is. I just kept messing around with them crappie till I made them bite. It has been that way for me for the last three weeks. I have to tease them, tease them, and tease them. There we go. That's a lot better fish right there. It's a white crappie. I hadn't caught a black crappie yet. Now I'm going to tell the fact right here. What I'm having to do, folks, is get that jig right in the strike zone, which I know where it is. It's just a place about the size of a tractor tire and leave that jig there and then move it just a little bit and hold it there that's typical of a non-active cropping that's how to get a fish that don't want to bite to bite one of the ways okay let's let him go yeah he is fat that fish is that's a female it's getting fat with eggs. This is actually the beginning of the pre-spawn period 
right now the water temperature the surface temperature is at 51 degrees and it's been that way for a while because of all this influx of rain has warmed the water up if this keeps happening we're going to have an early spawn okay folks let's slip back up in here real quiet i'm going to go ahead and put a little slab sauce on here too just a little bit well that was a lot really i drenched it to see if that'll help it. Usually I don't do that when I'm using a mina. But what will it hurt? Slow as they're biting. I'm going to try to get right back in here again and tease another fish. I believe there's some more here. Matter of fact, I know there's some more fish right here. Very little action on that rod tip, letting the mina just. He'll do that and then quit. Then he'll do that. Just got a little tap right there. That's a little bitty crappie. Full of them right here. So I'm just holding my rod. Every once in a while, I'll raise it up and then let it back just like that. See, I know exactly where them fish are. I know what level they are. And there he is, too. Oh my, my, why am I jerking so hard today? Y'all don't do that. I'm making a lot of mistakes here today, and I hadn't lost one yet, but now this is a little better fish. You do not have to set a hook like that with braid. And I can't get out of the habit for some reason. Let's see if we can flip him in. Yep. Pretty fish. I'm not going to gripe about that. That's about a mm, 10 and 3 quarter. 10 to 10, 10 and a half, 10 and 3 quarter. I'm going to get my pliers right here. And that's the way a hook's supposed to be. Like that, right in the roof of the mouth. I don't need my pliers. Thick as hell. That, that thick is healthy. That fish is healthy saying what are you doing biting that jig like that boy this is just the outside bend of this little creek right here that i'm gonna fish i'm gonna fish the drop right here right where it falls off to into around 20 feet of water the last time i was here on this spot i caught some pretty good white crappie right on the edge of this ledge but let's look at this bait Small, tough Emena, 1 24th of an ounce pill head, uh, golden chartreuse. And we're going to lay it on in there about where them fish are. Now, last time I was here, the fish were about anywhere from a foot to three feet off the bottom. The reason I'm using mono instead of fluorocarbon for a later is because I got a little stretch and I have about 10 feet of mono tied on that'll give me a little stretch a crappie has a real soft mouth fluorocarbon has hardly no stretch and i've tried it before and i i lose quite a few because it don't have any stretch so i have sensitivity plus stretch fishing this way there we go that fish hit it on the fall. I knew it. Pretty good one. Pretty good white crappie. I'm hanging in here with it, folks. I'm hanging in here like a rusty fish hook. Let's let him go. I'm waiting for the evening bite. See if we can't catch sure enough big one that's a pretty good fish anywhere but i keep saying big one big one big one i like to catch some extra big ones extra big ones let's let it back down straight down that was an aggressive bite that was the first fish that hit it on the fall today
Ya. Yeah. Well, tell her thank you. <laughs> What's her name? Becky. Well, tell her thank you. I've been catching a lot of these. Every once in a while, I'll catch one a little bigger. Uh, ah, that's probably a little better than nine. Yeah. But I'm waiting for that big one. What's her name? Becky. Becky. Tell her thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, t today, I know a lot of places to go, but um, let me let that fish go right here. But these fish is actually moving to me. They're coming along this break line, as you well know, and a few fish I park on that drop off, and then I'll just hammer them. I'll just wait for them to come to me instead of me running all over the place. There's a fish. This might be a big crappie right here. Talking to this fellow, folks, and I don't know if that's a, if that's a crappie, it's a sow cow. I believe it's a drum. Look at there, what a crappie. Okay. That's a good fish. That's the fish I was talking about. I've been waiting for. <laughs> Well, you can have him. I don't. I don't keep him. That is a big crappie. That's the kind of fish right there that I love to catch. That's about sixteen inches. About sixteen inches. He's pushing two pounds, ain't he? Well, yeah, you need him. Mama Sue's got plenty of fish. That's a good fish, folks. She won't let you. Let me keep skinning your boat up. Heck yeah. That's what it's about. All, there's a pile right here. A pile of fish right here. Oh yeah, I've been catching them all in here. They're coming to me. I want to see your reaction right here. Woo! Okay. Does that scare you a little? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That would be a good one. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you. you can, uh, What's your name again? Virgil. Virgil. Hey, how y'all doing? Oh, well, thank you. I want y'all to meet somebody. If you're over here at Weiss Lake and you want a good guy, one that'll put you on fish, this is the man right here. And his daddy's with him. We're going to meet him too. My name's Stanley Steve. Uh huh. Wise Lake Crappy Times Guide Service on Facebook. Hey, heard a lot about you. Um, what's your number if somebody want to get in contact with you to uh, catch a lot of crappie? Well, it's 706 331 1328. All right, folks. Now, I'm going to show you something. This gentleman right here, there's no uh, telling as to how many crappie he's caught. And what's your name, sir? I'm Leonard Steed, 81 years old and still enjoying every opportunity to be out here doing what we love. And what, and I tell you what, another thing is, y'all fish together all the time. You're 81 years old, folks. Can you count, how many crappie do you think you've caught in your lifetime? <laughs> what a ridiculous question. Several. Several. <laughs> oh, mate, they ain't nothing like it, are they? Nothing like it. All right, folks, there it is. You said in your own, you have peace of mind, peace of heart. Peace Thank of mind. Thank Lord, for what we're here for. That's exactly right. That's what it's about. Being out here, to me, it's just like being with the Lord. You're going to get me choked up right here. But uh, you're right about that. That's how I feel about it. And uh, these two right here are fishermen I'm talking about. And I want you to look how they got their... Look at all that stuff. Look at that. Now, how much do you say you could get one of them for? Well, 
about four grand. Four grand. Mama Sue, oh my goodness, she'd kill me. But that's no, really what wife, you need. Don't see this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, don't show her. Well, boys, it's been a pleasure talking to y'all. Same here. It's hard to put, put it in words, but there's not a spore, which I'm going to mention again, in the world like the sport of fishing. There's a lot of things that you can get out of it. If you have a bad day of fishing, well, it's just a bad day. But tomorrow could and probably will be better. I want to thank y'all very much for enjoying the day with me as much as I enjoyed it. All the great comments and hey, whoa. Remember, go fishing when you can, fuck all this good.